All right, so Death Knights have two main resources. They have runes, and then they have runic power. You have six runes, and your rune spending abilities usually generate runic power. The runes will recharge after a short period, where runic power requires you to use abilities that generate it. The four main abilities that use runes that you're going to be using as a Frost Death Knight is going to be Obliterate, Howling Blast, Death and Decay, and Remorseless Winter. Your runic power spenders are either going to be Frost Strike or Breath of Cindergoza, depending on your build. The Frost Death Knight rotation is essentially trying to get as many obliterates out as you possibly can, and the entire goal of the specialization is just focusing on those obliterates. Now, Obliterate on its own isn't that significant of an ability. It's just a smash of physical damage that costs two runes. The important part comes with the Killing Machine talent, and Killing Machine makes it so that you occasionally proc and increase the damage Obliterate does by making it frost damage and making it a guaranteed critical strike. This plays into our mastery, which makes it so our, all our frost damage is increased. Howling Blast is our other main ability, and the purpose of it is to get that Frost Fever debuff onto the target. This is a ticking disease with a 24 second duration that has a chance to generate additional runic power every time it ticks. Howling Blast on its own is a rather weak ability, and you don't want to cast it too often, with the exception of when you get a Rhyme Proc, which is another one of our talents. Rhyme procs are going to increase the damage that Howling Blast does by 300%. This should be prioritized over most other moves with the exception of a Killing Machine Obliterate. Our next rune spender is Remorseless Winter. This is a 20 second cooldown, 8 second duration AoE around you that just does frost damage over time. For one rune, it does about 12,000 damage. Compare that to the 2 rune cost Obliterate that does about 11,000. This is a very rune-efficient spell that we should be prioritizing as often as we possibly can. Biting Cold, Everfrost, and Gathering Storm are all talents that improve the efficiency of Remorseless Winter, making it an even more prioritized cast. The final rune spender is Death and Decay. This puts down a shadowy zone in an area that deals damage over time. Cleaving Strikes and Unholy Ground talents improve your Death and Decay usage, as long as you stay inside it. This is going to increase your haste by 5%, as well as make your obliterates cleave onto additional targets. This is called our Death and Decay window, and is critical to understanding our AoE priority and ability to do cleave damage onto targets. Death's Echo gives us an additional charge of Death and Decay, as well as Death's Advance and Death Grip, which is just another key talent that I would never avoid taking. Alright, so let's talk a little bit about cooldowns that we have on this character. So the most basic one is Mind Freeze. That is our interrupt. On a 15 second cooldown, you can interrupt casts. It's very important to interrupt casts on a lot of bosses, as well as a lot of trash. You should make sure that is in your priority. Next up, Death Grip. On a 25 second recharge, you can grab a the enemy and pull them towards you. This can be critical in certain bosses to be able to get new adds that spawn into the group or to get adds that need to be burned down away from whatever objective they're trying to activate. Chains of Ice will slow a target for one rune. This is a really effective slow that is very high priority on bosses where there is an effect where a mob is moving towards a specific location and you don't want it to get there. We have a variety of defensives, Anti-Magic Shell, Anti-Magic Zone, Icebound Fortitude, and Lichborn. Each of these performs differently and it gives you different amounts of resistances or styles and you should get familiar with when to use them in different encounters. The key to Anti-Magic Shell is that as you take damage from it, you generate runic power. So you utilize this to get you additional runic power so you can get out more of those Frost Strikes or a longer Breath of Sintergosa. Anti-Magic Zone is your raid-wide reduction in damage taken for the entire team, and this should be coordinated by your raid leader, but if it's not, you want to use this at a moment that there's a lot of magic damage going out on the fight to try and just help mitigate the damage and keep your team alive. For offensive cooldowns, we also have quite a variety of them. First up, Abomination Limb, or Slappy Hands. This thing is going to give you a bunch of spectral hands around you that are going to grip in targets, do a decent amount of damage, as well as it's going to give you constant rhyme procs so you can shoot out more of those howling blasts at the 300% increased damage. You want to save this ability for if there is a moment of a lot of adds during a fight, as it is a 2 minute cooldown, you want to line those up with add moments. If there are no add moments, then you just want to line this up with the rest of your cooldown usage. 
Pillar of Frost is going to be a 1 minute cooldown that increases your strength by 25%, and then every rune you spend while under the effects of Pillar of Frost is going to continue to increase your strength by an additional 2% until the end of that 12 seconds. Ray's Dead is just going to give you a ghoul that will fight alongside you. It does a decent amount of damage over its duration. Empowered Rune Weapon is available in two different spots in your talent tree, and if you take both, it'll give you two charges. This will empower your weapon, gaining 15% haste and generating runes and runic power for the next 20 seconds. This ability is pretty critical to playing this class effectively, so you definitely want to get both charges in almost every build. Frostburn's Fury is a 3 minute cooldown blast. It's a talented ability that you're usually going to end up taking. It does a huge amount of damage to all targets in front of you and slows their movement speed. This thing is scaling off of your strength, and you want to use this whenever your strength would be at its highest. So if you're using trinkets that increase your strength, or if you've used Pillar of Frost, at the end of Pillar of Frost, you're going to have your highest strength moment, and that's going to be when you want to unleash Frostrun's Fury. Finally, there's Breath of Syndergoza. This is a talent that makes it so that you breathe out frost damage over as long as you still have runic power, but it costs 18 runic power per second. So it's just going to drain your runic power down until you run out, doing a decent amount of frost damage to targets in front of you. Breath of Sindagosa and some of the other talented cooldowns are a little bit more specialized and only used in certain scenarios. Most of these aren't advised to be taken too often with the exception of Breath of Sindagosa, which has its own specialized build. Talking about talent builds, there are two main talent builds for frost DPS. You're either going to go with the obliteration specialization, or the Breath of Sindagosa. They're two wildly different playstyles, and they both require different focuses for your stats as well as your rotation. So you're going to want to get used to one or the other, and then kind of stick to that one usually. For Obliteration, it works better when you have a two-handed weapon. It focuses heavily on the ability Obliterate, obviously by its name, and it's about using your weapon to deal that damage. It has a very simple rotation curve, and you're able to reduce the cooldown of Pillar of Frost depending on how effective you are while you do the rotation. The more Obliterate Critical Strikes you get off during Pillar of Frost, the more you're going to reduce its cooldown, and you usually will end up with about 20 seconds between Pillar of Frost that you don't have that cooldown up. Because of how Obliterate works when wielding two one-handed weapons, it's not as effective to use the Obliterate spec with one-handers. Now on the other side, Breath of Sindragosa works infinitely better with one-handers than with a two-hander, and that's because on your second weapon you can put Razor Ice Rune. On your main weapon in both specialization, you use the Rune of the Fallen Crusader to get that massive strength boost, and that is required to be a Death Knight essentially. All Death Knights use that on the primary weapon. But in Breath of Sindragosa build, you're doing dual wield and your second weapon uses Razor Ice. You need that Razor Ice for Breath of Sindragosa to be very effective, so it's only really going to work with that two one-hander build. So let's talk about these two. If you're finding this video helpful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because it really helps us keep making more videos. First up, let's talk about Obliteration. So this specialization is going to use the Obliteration talent at the bottom left side of your Frost talents. Obliteration makes it while under Pillar of Frost, Frost Strike and Howling Blast grant Killing Machine guaranteed and have a 30% chance to generate a rune. This is going to be way more runes as well as way more Killing Machine procs. So long as you're under the effects of Pillar of Frost. So what this essentially means is you are going to activate Pillar of Frost and then perform either a Rhyme Empowered Howling Blast or a Frost Strike and that will give you a Killing Machine. You're then going to use that Killing Machine and then assuming you don't get another Killing Machine, you're going to go back to either Frost Strike or the Rhyme Empowered Howling Blast and constantly bounce back and forth. You need to pop those killing machines, and you need to use pretty much all of the runes you can on the killing machines. So you're using the only the Rhyme Empowered Howling Blast, and then you're using the Frost Strike to generate those extra killing machine procs. You don't want to have any unnecessary casts during your Pillar of Frost window, and so you want to use other cooldowns before you enter it, and plan out to have as many resources available as you can entering into it. You usually are going to want to make sure you have an empowered rune weapon available as well before you activate it. This doesn't trigger the global cooldown, so you're going to use it when you need it during the effect. 
is very important during your Pillar of Frost window to never cast a non-empowered obliterate. You get so many killing machine procs, you do not want to waste those runes on a obliterate that is not empowered by that killing machine. You also need to track your two short duration buffs. So that is going to be Unleashed Frenzy as well as Icy Talon. Both of these abilities are triggered off of your Frost Strike. So whenever you do damage with Frost Strike, you gain Unleashed Frenzy and Icy Talons. It is perfectly fine to cap out Runic Power during this rotation if you're getting a lot of Rhyme procs and Killing Machine procs, as long as you do not let those other buffs fall off. This is the only time I would allow a overcapping of Runic Power. The Obliteration specialization works so well in the Death and Decay window if you are working on multiple targets at one time and you're able to pop both Pillar of Frost and Death and Decay at the same time, using both Death and Decays over your duration of Pillar of Frost to be able to cleave down enemies like absolute mad is huge amounts of damage. The triple hit on those killing machine procs is just going to push you to the absolute top of the DPS meters. Your opener for Obliteration Specialization is Abomination Limb and Dead Remorseless Winter. Shoot out a Howling Blast while you're still getting into range? That'll get Frost Fever onto the target. If you got a Killing Machine proc, you're going to use Obliterate before then using Empower Rune Weapon and Pillar of Frost. As soon as Pillar of Frost casts, you cast Raise Dead, which is not on the global cooldown, and will utilize that extra strength from Pillar of Frost. From then on, you're going to follow the regular rotation. Outside of the Pillar of Frost rotation, you're still going to want to be using Obliterates mostly when you get Killing Machine procs, and you should only do a blank Obliterate if you're about to overcap on runes. So for the other talent side, we talk about Breath of Sindagosa. So this goes down the right side of your talent tree instead of the left, and you get that long channeling ability on a 2 minute cooldown. The duration of this ability can very much drastically change depending on how your procs work out while it's active, and sometimes you're going to have times where you think you're going to have an effective breath, and then a boss mechanic or something is going to happen that is going to make your breath end early. This is very punishing to the specialization, and can be very rough to play. So you have to make very deliberate choices with what skills you use when, as well as you need to make sure you keep one or more targets available for you to be hitting and generating that runic power in while you're fighting. You also need to plan out all of your cooldowns so that all of the different abilities that generate runic power are available while you're in your Breath of Sintagosa window. The opener for the specialization is Abomination Limb into a Remorseless Winter. Then you use two Obliterates and any Howling Blast Rhyme procs you get. Pillar of Frost, and then begin your Breath of Sintagosa and spawn your Raised Dead. At that point, you're going to want to use any of your racials like Blood Fury, Berserking, or possibly even Arcane Torrent. Then a priority rotation begins, which is using Obliterate if you're low on Runic Power, which is less than 30 using Remorteless Winter on cooldown, using Howling Blast only if you have a Rhyme Block or you're about to lose Frost Fever. Obliterate if you're nearly capped on runes. You want to hold them otherwise because you want to get those Killing Machine procs to help them be a little bit stronger and to get the runes back. Trying to keep ourselves above the 30 runic power as long as we possibly can, we're going to use things like Anti-Magic Shell, Horn of Winter, Empowered Rune Weapon, and other abilities to make sure that our runic power stays high as we're channeling this ability. You want to get the absolute maximum you can, and falling off early almost makes the spec irrelevant. You need to at least get about a minute of channeling here, or else you've really screwed up. You should never cast Frost Strike during your Breath of Sintagosa window. Breath of Sintagosa generates the two buffs that you're using Frost Strike on, so it's just a waste to cast that ability. So that's kind of the wrap-up of the two specializations, the two-handed Obliterate or the dual-wield Breath of Sintergosa. I would highly recommend going that two-hander Obliteration spec because it's just so much easier to play and just a lot more reliable. And I hope this guide helped you figure out how to DPS as a Frost Death Knight and what kind of builds and styles to play as this character. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and we will catch you guys next time.